The Disney Plus and Marvel Studios sequel, Agatha All Along, has finally wrapped up Agatha Harkness's journey with a finale that was as twisted as The Witch's Road itself. In this dark, yet somewhat comedic follow-up to WandaVision, we see Catherine Hahn's Agatha navigating new challenges to reclaim her power. Initially, People doubted the credibility of the show, but the story is packed with so many mind-blowing twists and surprises that it only deepens the Marvel Cinematic Universe in unexpected ways. While I enjoyed the thrill for most parts of the show, we are talking about the MCU, so it's only natural for Agatha all along to end the season by raising a million other questions. It's a pretty straightforward wrap-up for Agatha's story, but as the cliffhanger dictated, there's still plenty ahead for Billy. You don't have to be a divination witch like Lilia Calderu to understand what the next chapter is for Agatha, all along in MCU's story. So, without wasting another moment, let's discuss the possibilities of Agatha all along returning for a second season, and, of course, a few other burning questions. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Will there be a second season of Agatha all along? Well, the door to this question has certainly been left open, because even though Agatha may be dead, she has returned as a fun grey-haired ghost to team up with Billy and help him track down Tommy, which, to any Marvel noob, might sound like an obvious setup for season two. But so far, no one on the creative team has hinted at the possibility. With modern age streaming, it is always a bit of a mystery if a new show will come back for more, and Marvel's Disney Plus series are no exception. Shows like WandaVision, The Falcon and The Winter Soldier and Hawkeye wrapped up with fans anxiously waiting for news about future seasons. So far, Loki is the only live-action Marvel series to confirm another season right after its first. And here we are again, wondering if Agatha all along will get a season two. While the answer seems clear, but is it? From the start, Marvel Studios and Disney have been clear in their marketing for Agatha all along by calling it a mini-series. Even before its premiere, the plan was for these nine episodes to tell a complete, self-contained story, and now that the final two episodes have dropped, it is safe to say they have positively delivered on that promise. It is worth noting that Agatha All Along was only released because fans and audiences loved Catherine Hahn's take on Agatha Harkness in WandaVision. So, while a season two does not seem likely right now, Marvel Studios could always change course. Plus, since Agatha's story is so tied to WandaVision and the larger MCU, any follow-up seems more likely to happen outside her own series. We might just see her pop up as a recurring, lower-level villain in future MCU stories. Or, possibly, we might see Agatha again, or even another character from the show get their own spin-off in the future. Keeping that in mind, another reason a season two for Agatha all along seems unlikely comes straight from series creator Jack Schaefer. Having led both WandaVision and Agatha, Schaefer knows how to meticulously craft a story that wraps up within a single season. Agatha's story is largely wrapped up for now, at least until she finds closure and maybe faces her son in the afterlife someday. And let's be honest, ghost effects don't come cheap. So, like I said, we will probably see Marvel's Wicked Witch pop up here and there in future stories, but another full season just for her seems unlikely. What happened to Tommy Maximoff's storyline in Agatha all along? I think the biggest burning question of the show was Tommy's whereabouts. More importantly, is Agatha really telling the truth, or did Billy actually kill a boy to make room for his brother's soul? Normally, we would look to the comics for clues, but since the MCU has completely reworked Billy and Tommy Maximoff's resurrection stories, they are not much help here. That said, in the comics, Tommy eventually becomes a government test subject, which is a far cry from his current MCU. MCU storyline, where, at least for now, he is just having a really rough time at the pool. In the final part of the trial in Witch's Road, as Agatha helps Billy look for a vessel for his brother, Tommy's new body reaches its last moments and Billy manages to will his brother's soul to take over. Now all they need to do is find each other. With Ghost Auntie Agatha seemingly on a mission to help them reunite, we will probably be seeing the twins together again sooner than we expect. 
Why is Agatha helping Billy all of a sudden? Agatha Harkness is a complex and unpredictable witch. While she might spend most of her time taking down covens and stealing their power, Billy's faith in her reflects our growing affection for her, despite her dark past. Agatha is helping Billy because he reminds her of her son, Nikki, who very similarly saw the good in his power-stealing, witch-killing mother. At first, I found her protectiveness over Billy a bit surprising because after all, she killed his dog not very long ago. But as the story unfolded, we saw her soft side emerge when it comes to the Maximoff boy. In fact, he is the only witch she steals power from and does not end up killing. So, it looks like we will be following Billy and Auntie Agatha on their adventures together sometime in the future. If the witch's road is fake, how did Jen survive it? Jennifer Kale is the only one who survives Billy's road illusion, and right after she disappears, Agatha remarks that it was because she got what she wanted from the road, which makes sense to Billy since he created the illusion of the witch's road in the first place. For Jennifer, realizing that Agatha had bound her magic all those years ago was just a fortunate coincidence. This newfound understanding allowed her to break free from the spell that had trapped her for a century. Just in time to avoid Agatha's attempt to kill her. Most importantly, I think in his mind, Billy created the road as a complex puzzle he needed to solve in order to get to his brother. So, if you think about it, Sharon Davis died because she was not fit for the road, Alice Wu died because she chose to protect Agatha, and Lilia died because she chose to sacrifice herself to save her coven from the Salem Seven. Everyone was free to do whatever they wanted according to their will once they managed to solve their portion of the puzzle. While the other two witches chose to sacrifice themselves, Jen simply gathered her shit and flew off to her happy place. Why does Death cry for Agatha's demise, or let Billy go unscathed? Just how wild E. Coyote is not meant to catch the Roadrunner, the same goes for those two witches, as very evidently they were in a complicated relationship. They do have a deep-seated hatred for each other because of the tangled circumstances life has thrown their way. Death has taken away everything Agatha loved most, simply because maintaining the balance between the living and the dead is the main purpose of her being. Agatha, on the other the hand, dodges death at every opportunity because she refuses to face the son she failed or the fact that the woman she loved took everything from her. Now, about letting Billy go, well, the situation here kind of repeats itself as death struck a deal with Agatha. Billy Maximoff posed a threat to the balance that Rio was supposed to protect, which is why she thought of him as an abomination who cheated his way to a second chance at life. But death had also made a promise to her ex-girlfriend, and after Agatha's selfless sacrifice, she sort of honoured her by keeping that promise. Although Death is going to be very furious about the whole Tommy situation, but just like with Billy, she cannot force him to join her, as both of them can simply fly away to find another body to reincarnate in. Who is Nikki's daddy? According to the main canon, Nicholas Scratch actually does not have a father. Maybe Agatha pulled a wonder and created him herself. Or perhaps she and Death came up with him together. It is also possible that she grew him in her belly, just like she nurtured that dandelion in the morgue during the road's final trial. Who really knows? Because at the end of the day, it is the Marvel Universe, which means there are endless possibilities. How does Vision Quest factor into all this? Although Vision Show doesn't have an official title yet and is being informally referred to as Vision Quest, it seems pretty likely that it will address the fallout from WandaVision, just like Agatha all along does. Paul Bettany, who plays Vision, recently mentioned that he is a big fan of Agatha and always makes sure to stay updated on the show. He apparently loves the show and learns a lot from it to help him move forward with his role. Now, what exactly he needs to learn for his show is still a mystery, but we can definitely connect some dots here. Billy is Wanda and Vision's son. While Vision might be occupied with philosophical musings about the ship of Theseus, or spending time with the MCU's horniest robot aka James Spader's Ultron, he will likely be curious about the fate of the children he may not even have known he had. Do Agatha Harkness and Billy Kaplan have a future in the MCU? Simply because of her popularity, Katherine Hahn's Agatha definitely has a future in the MCU, whether she is alive or dead. As a ghost, she could pop up with any character at any time and for any reason. While storytellers will probably want to use her sparingly, the ending of her series strongly suggests that her adventures are not over just yet. The MCU generally steers clear of a resurrection plot, so audiences who haven't watched this series 
might find it confusing if a typically unserious ghost with a thousand plus aura points suddenly shows up with the Fantastic Four or other heroes. For characters like Billy Maximoff and Jennifer Kale, it is much easier to integrate their returns into new stories. While it is possible we might never hear from Jennifer again, there is also a chance that she could get her own spin-off, which would effectively be just like how Agatha all along followed WandaVision. But one thing is pretty clear that we will most definitely see Wiccan again in the MCU. Given how a Young Avengers storyline is brewing in the back, these characters might show up in the next two Avengers films and the post credit scene for the Marvels hinted. Plus, as we see in the final episodes of Agatha, Billy is on a mission to find his brother, so that could potentially lead him to his own spin-off show. And, given how Agatha seemed to view him as a sort of co-protagonist by the end of the nine episodes, there is also a chance that his quest will bring him and his ghostly sidekick into Vision's show, which could explore similar themes of lost family and identity that both Agatha and WandaVision touched on. No matter where Billy ends up, it looks like there is still a lot to explore when it comes to his powers and how they develop. If you know his comic book history, you realise the MCU has only just begun to scratch the surface of his reality-bending abilities and Agatha. All along leaves this as a little tease, hinting that his future Marvel appearance is yet to be determined. Is everything leading up to the Young Avengers? At this moment, all signs point to a direct yes. The Young Avengers, which Marvel has been hinting at for a while now, sort of seems to be in motion. Eventually, both Billy and Tommy are set to be part of the team. And we know that Kamala Khan, aka Ms. Marvel, has been out there recruiting snarky archers, like Kate Bishop from Hawkeye. So it looks like all our teenage superheroes are heading in the same direction. Plus, it makes sense as we start to fill out the Young Avengers team on screen. We've already seen Ms. Marvel, Hawkeye, Wiccan, Cassie Lang aka Stinger from Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, America Chavez from Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and Eli Bradley aka Patriot from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Now it's just a matter of piecing everything together. However, Marvel has publicly stated that they plan to slow down their television production to really focus on tightening up the MCU brand after a few misfires in both films and shows. Plus, we know Billy needs to find Tommy before their adventures can kick off with the Young Avengers. In short, we will get there eventually if the team-up happens, especially with all the recent changes in the MCU. But first, Billy clearly has some unfinished business to take care of, so while there has not been a lot of progress on the project, like Iman Vellani, we are also holding on to the promise she received from Marvel that she will be returning to the MCU eventually, at least. With everything that's going on, where does the MCU stand at the moment? That is quite a great question, especially since the timelines for many recently announced future MCU projects have been drastically shifted. But here is what we know is on the way. Eyes of Wakanda, the animated origin story series for Danai Gurira's Dora Milaje leader, Okoye, has been pushed back to August 6th, 2025. In the meantime, rounding out Marvel's offerings for 2024 will be season three of What If? Now, in 2025, Marvel is kicking off the year with the animated series of Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, which is set to premiere on January 25th. This series takes place in an alternate universe where Norman Osborn becomes Peter Parker's mentor instead of Tony Stark. Following that, we have Captain America, Brave New World, featuring Anthony Mackie as he takes on the lead role in his very own Captain America film, arriving on Valentine's Day, because apparently the Brave New World is for lovers. And after teasing us with a series of cameos, Charlie Cox's Daredevil will be the first character to make the leap from the Netflix Marvel era to the MCU with Daredevil born again on March 4th. Well, that is everything we know for now. But tell me, do you really want another season of Agatha all along? Or are you hoping for a Wiccan spin-off? Let us know about your thoughts and opinions in the comment box below. 